Hey YouTube! Alright, today we are going to be discussing the air-gapped offline machine. I know I'm um, skipping around a little bit, but uh, I know a lot of people maybe want to have this information sooner than later, so video number three will be discussing um, the air-gapped machine, the offline machine. I'm going to show you where to find the Cardano command line interface and um, it's in the user local bin on your on, on your node. Uh, it can be, you can grab it off your relay node, it doesn't have to be a um, block producer node. Uh, but you do need to grab uh, this compiled, I guess it's an EL, EXE, um, not 100% sure if they call them EXEs or not, but um, you need to grab the Cardano CLI, the command line interface. Um, to do so, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna be using um, FileZilla, you wanna, just download you're going to need to be downloading um, files on and off your servers and the easiest way is always going to be ftp you're not going to want a command line copy you know files all the time it's you know filezilla is is much easier i'm going to quickly also sneak in a, a quick install of ubuntu desktop on vmware uh, it's really quick and easy and then we're going to install filezilla i'm going to show how you do that i'm going to show you how you access your node download the Cardano CLI, and once you have that, you're gonna put it on a USB stick, and you're gonna walk it over to your um, AirGap machine that's also running uh, Ubuntu desktop, and maybe on, on VMware, most likely on VMware, and you're gonna just, you're gonna put this um, Cardano CLI into the user local, uh, local bin on your air gap machine and that's it once you have it in this file in this folder it'll be essentially it, this is kind of this this folder system um, allows it to be executed anywhere on your system so when you're on command line and when you're going to process a transaction you'll see later on in the coin cashew um, uh, tutorial you're, you're going to be doing tr um, transactions uh, when you're setting up um, your servers and when you're registering your servers and when you're sending money um, to your server uh, etc you're gonna have to do transactions and all that uh, is made possible uh, on your air gap machine by installing the Cardano CLI onto the user local bin okay so that is what today's video is going to show you let's dig in so in case you haven't watched the previous two videos and you're just wondering how to, how to set up the air-gapped offline machine, we're using CoinCashew's um, tutorial. So you just type in CoinCashew Cardano into, into Google. Boom, it's gonna pop up. Um, the last video we, first video we, sh I showed you how to set up a, a, a Bluetooth server on DigitalOcean and the second video, we went through how to set up a relay node, and we left off with the relay, no relay node syncing up um, to the blockchain, and uh, we'll have a look at it in a second, and then we skipped over number six, okay, and that is what I'm going to show you today. So this part right here confused me a little bit when I first uh, installed my server and when I did my setup. From your hot environment, also known as your block producer node, it can be the relay node, doesn't matter. A copy of the Cardano CLI binaries, it's just one fold, it's just one binary, uh, needs to be copied to your cold environment, okay? On your workstation, whatever workstation you use to um, access your DigitalOcean um, Cardano relay node, go ahead, so click into terminal, hit clear, and so go, Go and connect. So this is how I connect to mine. Uh, SSH um, dash I squiggly slash dot SSH slash. This is your uh, your um, SSH key. I called it Cardano. And we also in the first video I set up. Actually, in the first video I called it Coffee, and I then in the second video I changed it. So uh, it's for the rest of this series. It's always going to be Cardano. The SSH key is now called Cardano. The super user we made is it was called Cardano, and this is my IP and this is my port number. We changed the default 
port 22, we changed it to 2288. So hit enter, it might ask you for your password, or it might not. Then let's have a quick look at, uh, so CD cache node underscore home is a shortcut, it takes you to Cardano my node. And then let's have a look at um, dot slash g live view dot sh. Okay, whatever, hit yes. Hit any key. And there we go. Eight days ago <laughs> is when I did the last tutorial. Um, but yeah, we're, we're synced up. Uh, we're on Epoch 251. We're 70% of the way through this Epoch. Um, it's, it's working. So we're all synced up and, and uh, looking good. Hit Q to get out of that. We don't need to be there. Hit CD, go back. Let's, uh, so hit LS. LS just shows you what's in this directory. And you can see there's, there's not a lot in this directory. So there's looks, there's to be, there's four more directories inside this directory. So, but we need to go to, uh, one of the default, um, Linux directories. So we want to go to user, hit CD user. And then in here, uh, we actually want to go to local bin. Okay. Okay. So now we're in the user local bin and now hit LS. And lo and behold, there you are. There is the Cardano CLI executable, and there is actually the node too. We just need this one. So you need to copy this one and get it on your air gap machine. And then on your air gap machine, you're on the you know, you're gonna you're gonna save it, you're gonna copy paste it into the user local bin um, directory. And then once you have it in this directory on your air gap machine, your air gap machine is pretty much good to go. Okay. Um, that is that let's continue forth before we can do this on, you need a uh, Ubuntu desktop. Let's quickly install that to get it. You just type in to Google Ubuntu desktop ISO. Okay. ISO download something like that. And so here it is here. Ubuntu.com surprise, surprise, download Ubuntu desktop. Go ahead and hit it. And it is going to download in the corner here. Okay. It's going to take some, some time, but I already have it. So I'm going to skip ahead on VMware. Um, if you're, I, I have VM, uh, VMware pro, um, because I like to make virtual machines all the time. So, uh, if you don't have VM, you can get VM workstation. They'll give you one free one. And then if you need another one on a different machine, just use a different email. So hit new virtual machine, hit next. Um, it's going to ask you, where's the ISO? Um, you could hit browse and go find it, but now I've downloaded it twice. Now I'm about to download it three times. Uh, actually I'm going to hit cancel cause it already has the one that's already been downloaded. All right. Put in a username. So we'll call it, uh, we'll call it YouTube and we'll call it YouTube. And we'll type really crappy. We'll put in a password. We'll try to put in the password again without making an error. We'll call it Ubuntu 64 bit number three. Sure. Sounds good to me. We'll just keep hitting the, the next button and we'll just keep hitting the next button. All right. It's going to take a few minutes for this to install. And I'm going to pretend it's already installed and ta -da! here we are. <laughs> I'm just going to use this. One. Go away, go away. All right. So it's going to look like this. All right. Once it's installed, actually, it's not going to look like this. It's going to ask you to log in. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to figure that out, put in, you know, your password. And then it's going to look like this. Okay. From here, we need to go and find FileZilla and in Ubuntu, Go here, click on Ubuntu software, click on this guy, and try to type FileZilla, hit enter, click here, and hit install. And then you get, they're going to ask you for your password. All right, authenticate. Done. 
go down here, applications, open up FileZilla. I'm just going to make the screen big. Er, okay. Now we're in FileZilla. And we want to come up here to File, hit Site Manager. I already did one practice video, but we can do it again. So type in, uh, this is connecting to my relay node. So relay node for YouTube, whatever. And then you're going to come over here. Click on SF, uh, SFTP, SSH File Transfer Protocol. Go ahead and put in your IP. Now I'm assuming that, because we, you know, we're kind of doing this out of order, um, you would have most likely have already built your um, Ubuntu <laughs> workstation before you installed uh you know before you built your relay so you i'm assuming that you've already uh generated your key pair from this workstation if you don't have your private key on this you're gonna you're gonna probably have to do uh key file but um okay well let's just go with this and see if it works first all right so um sftp ssh file transfer protocol Put in the host name port, interactive Cardano, and let's see if it works. Hit card hit connect. See if it likes it. If it doesn't like it, then we'll have to. Okay, it's fine. It's fine with that because it already it, it, it's smart enough to find um, the private key. Um, let's just do. Let's just continue forth, and and I'll show you if it doesn't work for you what you can do. But let's do this do this step first while we're here all right so so it's it connected um, there is your Cardano CLI um, you need to put it somewhere so I don't know put it in documents or maybe have a folder actually in the tutorial they they generate a bunch of folders on your on your workstation actually they not on your workstation they generate the the folders on your air gap machine but um, on your workstation have a folder already made. I'm just going to dump it into documents for now. So hit download. I guess I could have did downloads. Doesn't matter. Same, same. It takes, won't take very long. Okay, it's done. File is been transferred. All right, let's close that. Go into your file system, go into documents. There you are, Cardano CLI. From here, you uh, plug in your USB key, um, copy paste it to your USB key, eject your USB key, take it over to your air gap machine and you know, it's your air gap machine is also gonna be using a, a um, also going to be using Ubuntu desktop, so it's going to be pretty easy just to you know plug it, plug in your USB, copy paste it, and drop it into that folder. Once it's in this folder, you are good to go. That is, that's the that's it. You're you're good to go at that point. All right, so that's it. Um, I'm just going to quickly swing back to FileZilla. If you run into the problem, um, let's have a look at FileZilla. So if you were connecting and it didn't work because you hadn't done the key, you would have to do key file and you would have to go find the key file. Okay. And then it's going to be looking for a PPK file. But if you just, um, uh, shoots, oh, there it goes. Uh, all files. You can copy, you know, you could go to your server um, or you should already have your private key on a USB, you know, probably two or three USBs, right? Um, grab the private key, um, make sure it's accessible, and um, it, can, it doesn't have to be a PPK. Uh, they'll actually convert it to a PPK, but you need to find it, click on it, and, and then hit open. And from there, um, FileZilla will have no problem because then it'll have uh, the, the private key file on, on file. So um, it worked for us because um, 
I, I guess FileZilla was smart enough to, to find it. But if it doesn't it doesn't work for you, um, then you're going to have to change interactive to key file. You're going to have to go find the key file, open it up, and then uh, it'll, it'll auto uh, make it into a PPK file. And then hit connect and you, you're good to go. All right. Uh, hope that helped everyone. Guys, smash the like button for me and I'll see you in the next video.